Hello and welcome to another Wolfetime Gaming video. Today we're going to be painting the Oathsworn Burrows and Badgers Mole that you can see just in the centre of the screen there at the front. It's the little guy coming out of the ground. It's a freebie with the, the last Kickstarter I backed when I, I backed the Massive Beasts. Uh, if you haven't already seen those videos, go and check them out there, um, painting those. As always, uh, before we start, let's get the kettle on. Okay, so this video is a little bit blurry, I do apologise, um, but uh, I've actually used some uh, contrast paints um, with this one. So to start off, we use the, I use contrast gullum and flesh, essentially to do around his hands, his nose and mouth, uh, just to cover all those like bare areas where there's no fur, essentially. Um, it went on really, really well and uh, actually um, went straight into the, the, the uh, recesses. Uh, so he's fantastic. Uh, I also use the um, Blood Angels Red. You can just see now I'm doing his jacket with. Um, again, another contrast paint by, by Citadel. Um, drops straight into the recesses. Adds that uh, shading straight away. Um, it's really, really nice. And uh, I did actually add Null Noil a little bit later uh, on in the actual... Uh, when we actually did it. But uh, for now, we just went with the contrast paints. I then used um, the Corvus Black uh, for his fur. It gives a nice, it's not a, a, a very deep black, it's quite a, it's almost like a very, very dark grey. Um, ideal paint for the, uh, all the, like the fur areas, especially on this, because nothing's really that black. So it's, uh, you know, when we look at a bad and black and things, uh, I always have to bring up the colour. But in this instance, using the Corvus Black, I didn't need to, it was perfect colour um, to use for the uh, the actual fur. Um, and it looked really, really, really effective. Um, I was really pleased with how it turned out, uh, which I'll show you some uh, HD uh, images at the end, um, purely because this video is not great. The camera was out of focus and I didn't realise until after. Uh, the next step was uh, I used a little bit of a shafted bone just to do his, his claws, um, just on his, on his hands. And I also used the same colour again um, to do the candle on top of his helmet, which I think is a great little feature. Um, and then uh, I shaded that a, a little bit later in the video as well. Uh, to do the actual flame on top of the candle, uh, I used to start with, uh, I used the Avalanche Sunset. Um, I then highlighted with the uh, Flash Gits Yellow. Uh, I also did this uh, little scarf in the same, uh, I only did the Avalanche Sunset on the actual scarf itself. Um, it looks really effective actually, it looks really nice and the yellow really stands out well from the uh, from the red jacket uh, it's quite a, a nice uh, contrast in the color in there so that was me doing the flash gets yellow just on the on the top there uh, on his uh, on the candle uh, and then I've got the Rhinox hide just for the base I use Rhinox hide pretty much for all of these uh, models it's a nice dark brown to start with and you don't really have to highlight it um, it, it's good too if you're showing a lot of soil but in my instance where I am covering it in flock uh, there's no real need to, but you do need to put a brown under there because you'd see the white through else. Um, nice and easy, quick job. Uh, great paint. Make sure you do use the um, uh, your palette there, just so you thin down uh, thin down the paint slightly because it is very thick. Uh, around the edges, I use the bad and black. I always use, go for the this, the bad and black around the edges, just so it gives a little bit of uniformity to uh, all the models I paint. Um, it's it's an older paint now. This this one is. This one's actually quite thick. Uh, but essentially, yeah, just went around, uh, around and, and painted the uh, the base of the with the abandoned black there. Nice and easy, quick job. So next stage was um, null noil. Uh, I put null noil all over the the actual model itself, really darkened it down, gave him like a dirty feel as well because he's been clawing around, obviously in the. Uh, underground making these little holes and things and mining as such with his little candle so I put none all over the whole thing there uh, it really did make a difference 
I then highlighted a, a little bit with just the Mornfang brown as well, just around the edge, of, just mainly around the, the body part where I was going to leave it uh, open a little bit more. Um, I then added a, a Cassandora yellow shade, Citadel shade, to the, the candle to actually finish that area off. And then we're on to basing. Nice and easy, quick job with this one. Um, essentially, I just used the PVA glue and then flocked the whole thing. Uh, you can see there, just putting flock around the whole base. Um, not really going mental with it at all. Not not going mad with any of the uh, clump foliage or anything. A nice, simple one for this little model. Uh, and I think he turned out really, really well. So there we have it. Uh, you can see the model now in its finished glory. Um, it's really, really simple to do. Um, you can get this effect really easily. Uh, it, just with you know a few paints throw it together it was done within maybe it maybe a couple of hours uh, max um and it, i think it turned out really really well i'm really pleased with him i don't know how he's going to work on the tabletop he's not really got many weapons at all uh, but we'll see and uh, see how he gets on but thanks for watching guys um really appreciate you taking the time to watch the video make sure you comment below on what you think and how well we've done see uh, any others you want to see maybe i'll work on um make sure you check out the other videos i've done previously as well there's a lot of nice uh, nice paint schemes i've done uh, or i'm pleased with them anyway uh, but make sure you subscribe as well to see any future videos and i'll see you in the next one